Greetings, fellow detectives. Wizard Kitten here, bringing you a new Nancy Drew analysis video. Today's video is brought to you by the patrons over at Mystique Manor and by all the official fellow detective channel members. If you too would like to support the channel and gain access to exclusive features, check out patreon.com slash wizardkitten to become a patron, or click join next to the subscribe button to become an official fellow detective. A couple weeks ago, I posted my official personal re-ranking of the Nancy Drew PC games after five years of making Nancy Drew content here on YouTube. This re-ranking was based purely on my personal preferences and the games that I have the most fun playing, but there are other, more structured ways to rank the games. Enter this video, where we will be ranking the Nancy Drew games together. I did this video almost four years ago now, where I included your opinions as fellow detectives so we could make a definitive ranking list together. The channel was much smaller back then and we had 100 fellow detectives participate, but this go around, we had 600. I am so excited by the participation in this survey because 600 votes is an exceptional amount of data. Using these numbers, I think we're going to come up with a really definitive ranking of the Nancy Drew games according to which ones are the most popular and which ones work best for the greatest numbers of detectives. I also rescored all the games using my official ranking system, so we'll see how those two compare at the end. First though, let's discuss how the ranking scale worked. I sent out a Google Form survey to you lovely fellow detectives asking you to rank the Nancy Drew games on a scale from 1 to 5. Detectives were instructed to rate terrible games a 1, bad games a 2, fine games a 3, good games a 4, and excellent games a 5. Detectives were asked to skip any games that they had not played, which means that some games had more total votes than others. To account for this, I decided to organize the data by assigning each game a total score based on the proportion of votes they received at each level. This does give preference to games that have been played more often and enjoyed more often. I figure if a lot of fellow detectives played a Nancy Drew game and loved it, then that is likely a stronger game than one that is less played but still enjoyed. Using this system, the Nancy Drew games have been definitively ranked by 600 fellow detectives. To compare, I used my standard rating scale that I use for my reviews, rating the games on a scale of 1 to 10 in the categories of plot and story, characters and dialogue, gameplay experiences, environments and design, and music and vibe. My scores aren't too different from the fellow detectives' scores, so I think it'll be fun to compare the scales. So without further ado, let's get into it. This video will not include spoilers, but will include general descriptions of all the Nancy Drew games. Let's start first with the games as ranked by you fellow detectives, beginning with the bottom five. These five games were rated terrible by the majority of fellow detectives. This does not mean that they don't have their fans, but generally speaking, these games are considered the worst of the worst. Number 35, Midnight in Salem with 70 points. Midnight in Salem was a huge disappointment to most fellow detectives. With a boring and drawn out gameplay experience, poor graphics and incomplete environments, a convoluted and yet dull plot, annoying and tropey characters, painfully repetitive music, and an underwhelming autumnal vibe. Number 34, The Shattered Medallion with 103.75 points. Though the reveal of Sunny June should have been exciting, this game ended up being a flop for most fellow detectives. The plot was stretched thin between Sunny's story and the game show, the stakes of the competition are non-existent, the character motivations are weak, the dialogue is weird, the environments lack exploration, and the game frankly just ends up not being that fun. Number 33, Ransom of the Seven Ships, with 115.5 points. The kidnapping of Nancy's best friend, Bess Marvin, should have been an exhilarating mystery, but this game gets lost in underdeveloped tropical locations, an over-reliance on bird's eye view, a complete and utter lack of suspects, overwhelming puzzles, and a plot that just doesn't stand up. Number 32, Secrets Can Kill, with 147.75 points. 
as the first game in the series, Secrets Can Kill had extremely limited dialogue, exploration, and story. Swapping out two discs really impacts the gameplay experience, puzzles are basically non-existent, and the 2D graphics of the time just don't measure up comparatively. Number 31, Mystery of the Seven Keys, with 166 points. As the newest game in the series, Mystery of the Seven Keys perhaps should have scored higher than it did. Unfortunately, this style of Nancy Drew game just doesn't seem to measure up for fellow detectives. For all its fancy graphics, massive environments, and plethora of characters, this game seems to forget an important adage. Quality over quantity. Next, let's move on to the games that round out the bottom 10. Despite avoiding the bottom five, these games still received a sizable portion of terrible ratings and mostly bad or fine ratings. Number 30, Secrets Can Kill Remastered, with 173.75 points. Though the gameplay experience is improved by removing the two-disc issue and the graphics are definitely better, the remastered version has many of the same issues as the original, while also clumsily introducing a new character. Number 29, Creature of Kapu Cave, with 191.25 points. This game had so much potential, but feels rushed and incomplete. The plot relies on exposition dumps, the environments lack exploration, the characters are annoying, the Hardy Boys are underutilized, and the game is poorly designed, so its most fun aspects, like making shell necklaces, become afterthoughts. Number 28, Labyrinth of Lies, with 224.25 points. A mystery revolving around Greek mythology should have been a home run, but the puzzles in the game are so overwhelming, the theater sets and museum do not mesh with the story, and the dialogue feels unrealistic and strange to the point where it's really difficult to connect with the characters. Great idea, poor execution. Number 27, Trail of the Twister, with 259.25 points. Though a game about tornadoes should be exciting, this one just feels like a dull chore run. The characters are mostly boring and forgettable, the environments lack exploration, the excitement that should have permeated the plot is poorly executed, and the puzzles are overwhelming, repetitive, and often annoying. Number 26, Tomb of the Lost Queen, with 272 points. Once again, a mystery revolving around ancient Egypt should have been a winner, but the plot is messy and poorly explained, the puzzles can often feel like too much, and the characters are so poorly developed that they seem incomplete and often aggravating. Moving out of the bottom five, we now approach the more middling games at the bottom. These games definitely have their supporters, but as a whole, they don't get many votes above fine from the majority of fellow detectives. Number 25, Stay Tuned for Danger, with 285.5 points. Though many fellow detectives enjoy the story, drama, and characters of this mystery, as only the second game in the series, there were still several kinks to work out. The game looks and plays pretty clunky, and it's sometimes difficult to know what to do. There are very few puzzles, and overall, it's just a little too short and simple. Number 24, The Silent Spy, with 291.5 points. While many fellow detectives appreciate the backstory of Nancy's mom, this game just felt too confusing and vague, while also failing to fully represent Scotland. There are some fun characters and dialogue, and some exciting moments, but the drama, adventure, and spy stuff doesn't always hit in the way it should. Number 23, Haunting of Castle Malloy, with 333 points. This mystery has great atmosphere, vibe, environments, and scare factor, but it can also be overwhelming due to several massive puzzles and some lengthy chores. It's also quite far-fetched, which works for some fellow detectives, but isn't everyone's cup of tea. Number 22, Danger by Design, with 341 points. For most fellow detectives, the plot just doesn't work for this one, since it changes halfway through the game and the two separate plots aren't interconnected as well as they should be. Still though, this game has some lovely French environments and decent puzzles. Some of the characters are memorable and others are pretty forgettable, so it ends up just being a little meh for most. Number 21, The Deadly Device, with 343 points. 
Analytical fellow detectives with an interest in science may enjoy this game, but its heavy focus on chemistry and physics, cold environments, and long, difficult puzzles can be turnoffs for others. The murder mystery is well done, and the characters are interesting to interact with, but this game perhaps needed a little more balance to be a real winner. And now for the upper middle games as voted by fellow detectives. These games are pretty evenly split between fine and good ratings, with more excellent than terrible ratings. We're starting to get to the games that have more supporters than they do haters. Number 20, The Haunted Carousel, with 357.5 points. It may be a little short and simple, but this game is also incredibly charming and a fun gameplay experience. The puzzles and mini games are enjoyable and not too challenging, the story is easy to follow and neat to uncover, and the characters are pleasant enough to talk with even if some of them could have used more depth. Number 19, Secret of the Old Clock, with 360.25 points. Nostalgic and unique in the series for its 1930s setting, this game also provides a light, fun, pleasant game experience. The vintage atmosphere and vibe complement the mystery nicely, there's some fun attention to detail in Titusville, and in the adaptation of Nancy's first official mystery. And though the characters are maybe a little one-note, they're decent overall. Number 18, Secret of the Scarlet Hand, with 364.75 points. Educational and challenging, yet fun and engaging, this mystery proves that learning can be enjoyable. The drama and excitement of the plot and characters is excellent, and the museum is complete, detailed, and marvelous to explore. The game relies a bit too much on phone calls, and some of the environments outside the museum can feel a little stagnant, but this one has lots to love. Number 17, White Wolf of Icicle Creek, with 368 points. Aside from a few really difficult puzzles and overwhelming chores, fellow detectives seem to appreciate this one for its beautiful environments, large cast of unique characters, and unique storyline featuring a gorgeous lone wolf. It provides fun adventures and challenges in a cozy and comfortable setting, which seems to work well for most. Number 16, The Captive Curse, with 383 points. Something of an underdog, this game seems to have gotten more appreciation over the years. Fellow detectives seem to enjoy the detailed and lush environments, the entertaining and dynamic cast of characters, and the scare factor of the monster. The story can get a little confusing and the minigames a little long if they're not your thing, but the game makes up for much of this with its charm and character. Next, we enter the top 15. These five games narrowly miss out on the top 10 and were rated good by most fellow detectives, but also received a decent proportion of excellent votes as well. They are considered solid games by the majority of fellow detectives. Number 15, The Phantom of Venice, with 386.75 points. Fellow detectives enjoy the excitement and intrigue of solving a spy mystery, coupled with the bright, gorgeous, and lush setting of Venice, Italy. The characters are memorable, the minigames are fun, and the puzzles present a solid challenge without being overly difficult. Number 14, Alibi in Ashes, with 387.5 points. This game is unique for its River Heights location and personal connection to Nancy and her history as a detective. The locations are bright and fun to explore, the gameplay is smooth and not overly difficult, the characters are complex, dynamic, and realistic, and the mystery is just fun to solve. Number 13, Message in a Haunted Mansion, with 400.25 points. Despite its clunky character graphics and relatively simple dialogue, fellow detectives love this mystery for its scare factor, gorgeous detailed and comprehensive environments, excellent historical plotline, and memorable moments. The characters in Second Chances are so fun, the hauntings are subtly spooky, and the Golden Gardenia is a beloved location. Number 12, The Final Scene, with 432.25 points. The mystery of this game is compelling, dramatic, intriguing, and exciting, with a highly memorable cast of characters, high stakes, and excellent creepy moments. The Royal Palladium is beautifully designed, grand yet dilapidated, and incredibly fun to explore. The puzzles are simply designed yet wonderfully integrated into the story. Though there's a bit too much phone time, this game is a real winner. 
Number 11, Ghost Dogs of Moon Lake, with 435 points. Though it only has three characters and could have employed more ghost dog attacks, this game is a solid favorite for many, due to its beautiful, detailed, and imminently explorable environments, memorable characters, fantastic spook factor, fun and perfectly challenging puzzles, exciting historical plotline, invigorating ending, and incredibly well-rounded story. Next up, we start the official top 10. These first five games were rated excellent by the majority of fellow detectives. Their scores were balanced somewhat by some good scores and even a few fine scores here and there, but the majority of fellow detectives agree that these games are some of the best. Number 10, Legend of the Crystal Skull, with 441.25 points. Though I was a bit surprised to see this one make the top 10, I can definitely understand why. The environments are spooky and incredibly detailed, complemented perfectly by the stormy weather and dramatic candle lighting. The characters are memorable, and the mystery, while straightforward, comes with some fun twists and turns. Though the puzzles can be quite challenging, they are fun to solve and assisted by a cleverly designed in-game guide. Overall, this game is dramatic, exciting, and memorable. Number 9, Ghost of Thornton Hall, with 448.75 points. A gothic lover's dream, this game is perfect for fellow detectives who appreciate dark, spooky environments, eerie, creepy, and terrifying scare factor, lush and gorgeous yet crumbling locations to explore in depth, complex yet not too difficult puzzles, extremely memorable and enjoyable characters, haunting music, and perfectly unsettling vibes and atmosphere. Number 8, Sea of Darkness, with 449.75 points. A visual masterpiece, it is easy to get lost in the beauty and detail of the environments and locations of this game. Bright and bold in some locations, comfy and cozy in others, this game nails immersion while also delivering a brilliantly crafted treasure hunt, extremely memorable and fun characters to interact with, a plethora of puzzles, invigorating moments, and beautiful depth of storytelling. Number 7, Treasure in the Royal Tower, with 461.25 points. A masterpiece of design, Wickford Castle captures the hearts of fellow detectives with its grand design, detailed environments to explore, unique characters, and attention to detail for perfect immersion. The characters are incredibly memorable and fun to talk to, the mystery is charming and exciting to solve, the puzzles are integrated effortlessly into the plot, and the music and atmosphere is magical. Number 6, Danger on Deception Island, with 461.75 points. With some of the best atmosphere in the series, fellow detectives love immersing themselves in a mysterious, foggy seaside town with a lighthouse, beaches, cozy cafes, and whales. The music and vibe is absolutely on point, the characters are iconic, the phone friends are some of the best the series has to offer, the puzzles are magnificent, the ending is absolutely thrilling, and the story is detailed, authentic, and marvelous to unravel. And finally, the best of the best, the top five games as voted by fellow detectives. These games overwhelmingly received excellent votes from fellow detectives with very few exceptions. Number five, Shadow at the Water's Edge with 487.75 points. This game is a masterpiece, expertly executing jump scares, subtle environmental scares, and haunting creepy vibes alike. The music is mournful yet beautiful, the culture and traditions of Japan take center stage, the environments are beautifully detailed and fun to explore, the cast of characters is incredibly memorable and fun to interact with, and the story is heartbreaking in its detail, complexity, and twists. Number 4, Curse of Blackmore Manor, with 493 points. This iconic mystery capitalizes on the majesty, intrigue, and haunting history of an English manor on the moors. The historical plotline and spooky modern-day story are excellent, coupled with exciting scare factor and uniquely charming elements. Blackmore Manor is simply gorgeous and massively fun to explore, with its winding halls, grand rooms, and secret passages. The characters are extremely memorable, the puzzles are challenging yet so satisfying to solve, and the music and vibe is absolutely top-notch. 
number three, Warnings at Waverly Academy, with 503.5 points. A mystery at an all-girls boarding school becomes an immediate win thanks to dark academia-inspired environments with cozy spaces, a grand library, and a gorgeous autumnal courtyard. The characters are dramatic, memorable, funny, and compelling. The plot twists are brilliant. The historical plotline shines. The puzzles are just the right amount of difficulty. The changing weather is so atmospheric. And the music is perfection. Number two, Secret of Shadow Ranch, with 506.5 points. With one of the most brilliantly crafted and tightly knit stories of the series, this Western-inspired romance and treasure hunt is absolutely brilliant. The environments are so detailed and fun to explore, yet feel expansive. The characters are all iconic and quotable, the historical plotline is perfect, and the connection to the modern-day mystery is magic. The puzzles are perfectly right and integrated into the story, the music perfectly captures the West while still being incredibly unique, and the environments are bright and bold, yet still ominous and mysterious. And finally, the best mystery of the Nancy Drew series according to fans collectively. Number 1, Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon, with 522.25 points. This game received the highest number of excellent votes, with 70% of fellow detectives agreeing it is an excellent game, and a further 22% rating it as good. This powerhouse of a game is beloved and respected for good reason. It successfully pulls off a large cast of characters so that each one is memorable and dynamic, fun to interact with, and full of depth. The historical plotline is fascinating and beautifully connects to the modern day mystery. The game is funny and charming, but also mournful and spooky. The music captures the heart and the atmosphere is marvelously executed. The puzzles are perfectly challenging and fun, the gameplay experience is smooth and exciting, and the environments are full of detail, massively fun to explore, and feel complete yet expansive. All around, a massive achievement of a game for nearly all fellow detectives. Now let's break down these scores with a little bit of analysis. It was definitely interesting to see how the game scores skewed from mostly terrible votes for the bottom five games to a fairly even bell curve for the middle games and mostly excellent votes for the top five games. Pretty uniform opinions started to emerge as the data came in, and though there were some really close scores, there was also a fairly even progression from game to game as the scores increased. There were also very few surprises as I tallied the final scores. Though a few games were a little higher than I expected and some a tad lower, the distribution ended up being roughly what I've gathered when chatting with fellow detectives on streams. Though individual preferences may vary, the Nancy Drew community as a whole does seem to have similar priorities when it comes to a Nancy Drew game. Scare Factor generally seems to be enjoyed, with games like Curse of Blackmore Manor, Shadow at the Water's Edge, Ghost of Thornton Hall, and Legend of the Crystal Skull all making the top 10. Additionally, it's clear to me that detectives prefer strong stories, memorable characters, balanced puzzle difficulty, and intricately designed environments. These elements are far more important than, say, ultra-high-end graphics requirements, or having a ton of characters, or trying to make a really complex plot. This is important to note, as the two most recent games, Mystery of the Seven Keys and Midnight in Salem, both solidly landed in the bottom five and seem to have different priorities than the rest of the series, priorities that do not seem to align with those of the Nancy Drew community as a whole. If I were to give advice, I would say, remember, quality over quantity. Some other interesting trends. The top 10 skewed in favor of the classical era of Nancy Drew games, but also included three Renaissance era games and two modern era games. In contrast, only Secrets Can Kill and Secrets Can Kill Remastered from the classical era made it into the bottom 10. Meanwhile, both postmodern era games, three modern era games, and three Renaissance era games made the bottom 10. As a whole, this seems to suggest that the Nancy Drew community enjoys their nostalgic favorites, but are absolutely more than willing to enjoy new games if they are crafted well, keeping in mind the priorities that I mentioned previously. 
It's also interesting to know that fellow detectives enjoy games in a variety of settings, recognizing quality despite personal preference for a particular vibe or atmosphere. In the top 10, there are snowy games, cozy games, gothic games, and western games. As someone who generally does not enjoy western or country motifs, I would still agree with fellow detectives that Secret of Shadow Ranch and Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon are excellent games. The location doesn't matter nearly as much as the execution and detail of the location. Attention to detail matters to fellow detectives. Finally, I re-ranked the Nancy Drew games using my own ranking scale to see how my opinions match up with those of the community at large. This is different from my personal preference ranking and involves me trying to more objectively rank the merits of each game. All in all, the results are pretty similar, as you can see here. In fact, the top 10 is almost exactly the same, though I include Ghost Dogs of Moon Lake as opposed to Treasure in the Royal Tower and The Final Scene as opposed to Legend of the Crystal Skull. My bottom 10 are also almost exactly the same, with the exception of The Silent Spy in mine instead of Tomb of the Lost Queen. These are still super close to each other though in the rankings. Overall, there are some that I generally rank higher, like Tomb of the Lost Queen, Haunting of Castle Malloy, Secret of the Scarlet Hand, and Ghost Dogs of Moon Lake, and some that I generally rank lower, like Phantom of Venice, Secret of the Old Clock, and Treasure in the Royal Tower. For the most part though, my opinions were never more than six spaces away from the general consensus of fellow detectives, which I found quite interesting. So there you have it, fellow detectives, the Nancy Drew games officially ranked by the Nancy Drew community. Thank you to everyone who participated in the survey. I hope you enjoyed it and seeing all of this data. I'd love to know what you think of the outcomes. Did everything pan out how you expected or were there some surprises? What games do you rank very differently than the majority of fellow detectives? Let a wizard kitten know in the comment section down below. If you really enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that like button or tipping me for the video with a super thanks next to the download button right beneath the video. If you would like to come join a fantastic group of fellow detectives at Mystique Manor as a patron for the channel, gain access to exclusive content and support the making of more content like this, please check out patreon.com slash wizardkitten. I also have channel memberships with exclusive badges and emojis to use during streams and in the comment section. If you'd like to support the channel by becoming an official fellow detective, click join next to the subscribe button. Please feel free to follow the channel on Instagram or Discord, linked in the description box down below. And as always, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more Nancy Drew and Cozy Game content. Thank you so much for watching, fellow detectives. I will see you soon.